Well, good morning, Monica Stenberg back with you for the morning message. And I wanna take the next couple of uh, weeks together to talk about the armor of God. I began to think as I was praying, I be believe that the Lord gave me these thoughts to begin to think about how so many in the body of Christ are naked. They're running around unclothed. And I don't mean the clothes that we wear, that we see on one another, but in fact, the fact that in the spirit realm, many are unclothed when it doesn't have to be that way because God has given us his armor to wear. So I want to start this week by just uh, opening up with this passage out of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 3. It says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Well, the first thing we need to realize when we read this is Paul is speaking to the Corinthians. This is the New Testament. This is the, the New Testament church receiving instruction from God through the Apostle Paul. And he's letting them know, first and foremost, that we don't war against the flesh, okay? But we do war, okay? We do have a warfare. It says that we don't, though we're walking in the flesh, we're living our daily lives in the flesh, in these bodies, in our homes, on our jobs, with our family, all the things in these fleshly bodies, that is not how we fight, okay? We, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. Verse four of 2 Corinthians 10 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So I want you to know that it's so important that we first and foremost understand that there is a warfare. If you don't know that you're in a battle, you will lose. If we don't understand that there is a warfare happening around us, then we won't fight and we won't win. So it's very clear in the script, here in the scriptures, it says we don't war according to flesh, but it does say the weapons of our warfare. Whose warfare? Not God's warfare. Okay, God is not fighting the devil. God is not fighting anyone. God has won. Jesus finished his fight and then he gave us his spirit and he also gave us weapons because it says in verse four once again let's read that for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds so it's so important to remember first and foremost that we are in a war okay it's our war it's not god's war it's our war he gave us weaponry and we're going to get into that in the upcoming weeks what did god give us and how do we use it but first and foremost i want to let you know that what's happening to you is not random what's going on around you is not random you are not fighting your neighbors your family you're not fighting your spouse your children your siblings your boss your co-workers, because it says, for though we walk according to the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. We are armed with weapons that God has given us. Let's look at Ephesians chapter six, starting at verse 10, it says this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Oh, let's read that again. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is a wonderful scripture that reminds us because we are in a warfare, we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are in a battle, but you are not coming into it with just your own strength. Can someone say amen to that? I know I can. I am so blessed to be reminded by the Lord in the season that the things that I face, the things that you face, the things our families face, our cities, and even our nation face, do not get one in the, in the flesh. We're not going to do them by the arm of our own abilities. The, the flesh is the, the realm of what we can accomplish on our own. But it says that we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We can tap into the power of His might. And that is what we begin to war with. And when we come to any battle with the power of his might, it is a game changer. So I don't know what you may be facing today. Everyone is facing something. You may have overcome in one area and won the battle there, but now you have another area to face. You may have, some of you have warfare happening on all fronts. It could be the fact that some of the people you love are not serving the Lord. 
people you know and love that have become backslidden or have turned their back on the Lord or have become overwhelmed by the enemy, by circumstances, by despair, by grief, things that are going on in their life or your life. It could be finances. It could be your body. It could be sickness has attacked your body. The Lord today is reminding you that through his word, you will fight a good warfare. We need to understand that these things are not happening randomly. There's so many things I want to share with you to remind you what you're fighting and how to fight. I want to encourage you today to call on God, to be reminded that he has given you his armor. He has given you the name of Jesus to call upon. In fact, uh, verse 11, Ephesians 6, 11 goes on to say this, put on the whole armor of God. Whose armor? God's armor. You don't have to go to battle with your own strength and you don't have to go to battle unclothed for what's ahead of you, whatever your battle is. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You can stand against whatever is coming against you. If sickness is coming against you, you can stand against it because the Lord is with you. He's given you an armor to wear. He's given you the ability to stand against what the enemy is bringing against you or what life in general has brought against you because we live on planet earth where things are happening all around us. Verse 12, let's go on to read. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not your spouse. It's not your family. It's not your neighbor. It's not your boss or your coworkers, it's not the government, it's not, you know, your local officials, it is, it's not the police, and it's not the people in another community, it's not another race. Listen to me. You need to understand the enemy wants to get us off track. He wants to get our eyes on things. We want to think that we're fighting against people, but we're not because verse 12 of Ephesians 6 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So we aren't wrestling against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling. Did you catch that? So we're not fighting with people, but we are fighting or wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places or, or heavenly places. But I want to tell you, don't let that scare you. Don't let that throw you off because God has not left us without the ability to deal with it. We have the power. We have the weaponry. Verse 13 goes on to say, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the, taking the shield of faith with you, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Well, listen, the, I, I, I'm going to close this morning with you, but I'm going to encourage you to, to check in next week. We're going to speak some more about this. I want to continue to share with you about this warfare and this armor. I don't have time to go to, into all of it today, but I want to, to, to want to encourage you with this. Yes, you are in a warfare. You are not fighting against the people around you. You are in a spiritual battle and God has given you his word, first of all, his word in your heart. And then he's going to show you, and I'm going to walk with you through some scriptures to show you how you can wield the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we can take up our shield of faith. Listen, how do we put on this armor? We're going to talk about in the upcoming this in the upcoming weeks. It's not like we sing a song. Some of you may say, well, I get up and I pray and I put on my helmet of salvation and a breastplate of righteousness. Or you may sing a little song and all that's cute and great for learning it and remembering it. But the way we put this uh, armor on is much different. The Word of God teaches us how to actually wear this armor so we're not running around letting life overcome us, letting situations overcome us, circumstances or things that the enemy has planned for us. But in fact, we have the Word of God to help us. In fact, 
I'll tell you today that I believe that God is preparing to awaken you to remember what he's taught you and how to walk in this armor. So let me pray for you today. And I hope that you'll uh, get back with us next week at, with the next in this series and the next uh, morning messages. And I'll have more to share on the armor of God. But I just want to encourage you today. You are not left without protection, without clothing. God has given you armor and weaponry and he's going to re- teach you by the spirit and through this time together, how to wield those weapons so that you are protected and you have victory. So father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that your word is truth. Your word is spirit and it is truth. It is life to those who receive it and it's health to all our bones. And as we hear your word, we begin to move on it. So I pray right now for those that are joining me during this time, I pray that you would quicken their hearts to your word, that you would open their ears to hear you speak, that their eyes would be open to the warfare that's around them, that they would learn to be disciplined in this warfare and to follow your directives out of your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.